<laughs> Welcome live stream viewers. We are so happy to have you with us today because we have a very, very special show. I know I often say that, but today I mean it with all my heart. This beautiful woman across from me, Mariette Formo, is doing work that is amazing. And I so look forward to introducing her to you and letting her talk about her work in just a little bit in our show. But Mariette, would you like to say hello to our live stream viewers? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. The pleasure to be here, Paula, with you and everyone else that's with us. Thank Yahoo. You. <laughs> and we're glad you're here because you're in for a real treat. All right. In just a moment, we are going to begin our show. Tired of the rut you're stuck in, but don't know what to do? Change it up! Join Life Transitions therapist, speaker, and best-selling author, Paula Shaw. She'll be exploring topics that make change and the challenge it presents smoother and more productive. She'll also be spotlighting change makers who are leading the charge to make the world a better place. If you're ready to live a more exciting life, at home, in the workplace, and around the world, it's time to step out of your comfort zone and change it up. Now, here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I am so glad you're here today because I have a very, very special guest. And we're going to be talking about some very important things today. Her name is Mariette Formo, and she is the creator of a program called Brilliance Inside. That is a program that is being carried out in Donovan State Prison. And a big part of this program is actually putting on a major TEDx event where the prisoners of Donovan are the speakers in this event. They also are the coordinators and the volunteers that help it all come together. And people from the outside come in to hear this program. We are going to be talking a great deal more about this program with Mariette Formo in just a few minutes. But right now, I, I just want to welcome you to Change It Up Radio. As most of you know, I'm Paula Shaw. I am the author of Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? Chakras, the Magnificent Seven, and saying the right thing when you don't know what to say. I'm also a life transitions coach, and, and my work is really all about helping people deal with change. Change is our friend and our foe. You know, we, we love it, we need it, it makes life exciting, but we have such a hard time with the discomfort of the unfamiliar. And so, Change can, can be upheaval that some people have a very hard time dealing with. And one of the reasons I created this show is to help people deal with change. So what we're all about is spotlighting change makers who are trying to make the world a better place, like Mariette Formo, our guest today. And we're also about bringing you information to help make change smoother and more productive in your own life. So we are really happy to have you here. And by the way, if you want to learn more about Change It Up Radio, or you'd like information about being a guest or a sponsor of this show, you can go to changeitupradio.com. That's changeitupradio.com. And if you'd like to learn more about my work, because what's different about the way I work with my clients is that we don't just do talk therapy. We actually do different kinds of energy, psychology, and mind-body interventions to help people to move more quickly and to be dealing on a bigger level than just the conscious mind. So if you'd like to know more about that work or about scheduling an appointment with me, or talking to me about your doing a speaking event for you, you can get that information at paulashaw.com. That's paulashaw.com. All righty. So I've mentioned the work that Mariette Formo is doing in the prisons, and one of the reasons I'm so excited about that work is because we have a real problem with 
what is going on in our prison system today. Uh, there are over a trillion people uh, or I'm sorry, not a trillion people. It is costs over a trillion dollars to incarcerate all of the people in our country that we have in prisons. Five million children have a parent in prison. That number just blew me away. 95% of inmates who return to society will come back into prison within a three-year period. That is, is really the core of, I think, the, the pain that we need to talk with Mariette about today. There's a 65% recidivism rate. And, and I know the reason for that is because when these men come out of prison, so often they're not prepared for the world. They have no skills. They went into prison angry, violent people. And if they don't receive programs that help them change that mentality, they come out of prison maybe even angrier, maybe even more bitter, more resentful. And when Marriott told me about the work that she's doing and what she's seeing and what she's learning, yes, she said learning, she calls the prisoners that she works with her greatest teachers. I was so moved by my conversation with her that I said, well, we just have to talk about this on the show. So I, I'm really looking forward to today's show because there's a real problem out there. You know, when people get out of prison, even if they have been in for many, many years and they're what we would call rehabilitated, there are areas where sometimes they can't live. There are jobs they can't have. There is stigma out there. If they fill out an application and say they were in prison, chances of getting that job are very slim. And so what ends up happening is they're wandering around like, what do I do? How do I fit back into the world in a legitimate way, in an honest way? And. I was so pleased recently, some of you may remember, we had Raman Kiri on our show, and she is also doing um, a program at Donovan State Prison called Freedom from the Inside. And one of the things that I learned in attending that program with her was that there are some beautiful programs being offered now, at least in Donovan State Prison. I'm not sure if that's going on in prisons all over the country, but that's something I'll definitely want to ask Mariette to see if she knows anything about that. But what I saw in these men in my own conversations with them is their hearts have changed. Their thinking has changed. And if that doesn't happen, then you just go back out into the world a damaged person who, who is maybe um, having an even more difficult time assimilating and trying to do life in what we would all call the right way, the honest way, the straight and narrow way. And so people like Marriott have realized that somebody needs to go there. Somebody needs to help these men learn new skills, learn new ways of being so that they can come out and actually be successful. So I'm very, very anxious in our next segment to start that conversation with Marriott and see and bring to you imp important information about the kinds of things that can be done to help change this high, high recidivism rate, to change the amount of people that we have in prisons in the first place. But before we go on to that discussion with Mariette, I would like to let all of you know as you, you do know, we have been following Carson Caldwell for the last three months. Carson Caldwell, for any of you who are new listeners, rode a bicycle across the United States from Philadelphia all the way to the shores of California barefoot to raise awareness and money for the starving children in Yemen. He's 24 years old. He's never been to Yemen. He's never met any of these people or children, but when he read the statistic online that the most starving people in the world were in Yemen, 
it just touched his heart, opened his heart, and he decided to reach out to a charity called Betu Mall, who has great success with actually getting the aid to the people. And Betu Mall supported him and sponsored him riding that bike across the United States. And so far, they have raised over $20,000. And remember what Carson shared with us, $1 will provide a meal for a family in Yemen. So 20,000 meals have now been provided. And of course, including that will also be supplies and medicine that these people need. So I want to tell you all that I was there in Long Beach on Monday when Carson arrived and it was such a joyous experience to actually get to finally meet him in person and to have lunch with him afterwards and spend time with him in the afternoon, really getting to know this beautiful human being. I mean, he is a very rare 24 year old. This, this global concern that he already has in his heart is so beautiful. And, and just listening to him, and by the way, he was barefoot. <laughs> his dad was even concerned the restaurant might not want to let him in because he was barefoot, but there was no problem at all. We talked a lot about how being barefoot just works for him, it's just more comfortable. And of course, I got to talk to him at length about how he's actually naturally earthing. You know, he is letting the electrons of the earth into his body in a very powerful way. And I'll tell you, if having that kind of a dose of electrons opens your heart and opens your consciousness and makes you a beautiful being, like Carson is, we should all be going barefoot. And maybe it's true what one scientist said a while back, that the worst thing that ever happened to humanity was shoes. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you all know, Carson is alive and well. He made his journey safely and successfully, and now it's going to be exciting to see what happens next, because I don't think you take a trip like that without a massive change in your consciousness and your goals and your dreams. So we'll keep an eye on Carson, and we'll find out what's next up for him. In the meantime, I'm happy to report that the day after his arrival, he went to Disneyland, <laughs> just like in the commercials. So Carson, if you're listening, we're just so delighted that you had a successful journey and we thank you for who you are and what you did. All right, in just a moment after this break, we'll be coming back with somebody else who's doing major work in this world. Mariette Formo. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more Change It Up with Bola Show on AM 1170, The Answer. Hi, Paula Shaw here. I'm so delighted to share with you that LifeWave has become our newest sponsor on Change It Up Radio. My family and I all use their tiny wearable patch technology, and the results are life-changing. My sister had lupus for over 20 years and has never slept well. Now she does. My mom's frozen shoulder simply went away. My favorite is the Age Reversing X39, a patch engineered to activate stem cells. Yeah, it's true. They really work to improve how you look, feel, perform, and heal. LifeWave patches use a patented form of phototherapy using frequencies of light to safely boost health and wellness at the cellular level with no drugs. Learn more online by visiting LifeWave.com. That's LifeWave.com. Hi, I'm Kelly Klein of One Trust Home Loans, Loan Coach Kelly. A while back, my business was in a slump. And it triggered a lot of self-doubt and fear, and it even had me questioning if I'd made the right career choice. So I booked a session with Paula Shaw. And after hearing my predicament, she explained that when we get into negative, self-sabotaging thinking and we are being run over by our limiting beliefs, it's almost impossible to create positive outcomes. She helped me clear those destructive thoughts and beliefs using her cutting-edge energy psychology techniques. Not only did I feel a whole lot better after the session, but within two weeks, I had seven loans in my pipeline. I was so glad that I went to see Paula Shop. And you should too. It really changed my perspective on life, business, and now my business is going great. 
You can reach her at 626-864-0756. That's 626-864-0756. 626-864-0756. Or check her out at paulashaw.com. That's paulashaw.com. Welcome back to Change It Up. Now here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I, we are being brought to you today by LifeWave, leaders in the field of activating your stem cells, which they do through phototherapy patches that work amazingly well. I use them, my family uses them, everybody I know is using them and having great results. So we are delighted to have LifeWave as our sponsor. And now, what I have been teasing since the beginning of the show, I get to introduce you to a woman whose work is amazing and miraculous. So let me tell you just a little bit about Mariette Fermo. After discovering mechanisms of turning our society's cycle of violence into one of transformation and healing, Mariette founded this program called Brilliance Inside in October of 2017. The healing cycle, in, according to Marianne, starts with transforming prison from a container of violence to a creator of peace. I love that statement. I love that statement. Transforming prison from a container of violence to a creator of peace. And she is doing that work at Donovan State Prison. Brilliance Inside achieves this first by creating a safe space for participants to uncover their inner brilliance and then empowering them to transform others by sharing their stories and their experiences. Uh, this part I was really amused by. This is an unlikely journey <laughs> for an Ivy League Berkeley MBA, which is who Marriott actually is or was before what the, the moment came that she knew she had to start doing this work. And one of the things I've already shared with you that I really love is that she's created um, and organized a wildly successful TEDx Donovan Correctional event that happens every year. So I think without any further ado, you're dying to meet this woman and I'm dying to share her with you. So Mariette, welcome to Change It Up Radio. Thank you, Paula. I'm really honored to be here. Oh, I'm so delighted to have you here. Mm -hmm. So let's share with everybody, how did this happen? How did this MBA, and I know you had done things like uh, creating innovative technologies to solve cancer, uh, to have access to electricity and educational challenges. You were working in the corporate world pretty much, right? Correct. And what happened? How did you end up at Donovan State Prison? By choice, by the way. <laughs> by choice. That is a little detail that's worth adding. Um, so, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I grew up, um, I moved to this country um, because my parents created a winery in Napa. And so my entire life has been entrepreneurship and business. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's the path I was on. That's who I was being. And, um, and, uh, one day, I, I've been meditating for about 12 years, and mm -hmm. one morning, about four years ago, I was meditating, and that day I heard three words that changed the course of my life. And what were they? Those three words were, go to prison. <laughs> oh my God. Seriously? Absolutely. And, and what did you think when you heard well, those words? I will admit, the first time, I just discounted it as one of those fleeting thoughts in our head that has absolutely no meaning. Right. Insanity. Like, and, it's a crazy moment. And um, But it kept coming back and kept nagging. And, and the more I pushed it away as this ludicrous idea, because that's what it was, mm -hmm. the more I felt it pulling me in. There's a part of me deep inside that just said, just trust. Just go. Mm. And um, there's a whole journey about going to prison because now I bring people in on a weekly basis, but it took me a little while to understand how to <laughs> open up the gates of Donovan. Yes. And, but I, um, I learned as I started Googling around um, 
that Donovan is the local um, state prison here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And went to the next, and I stepped into those gates um, the first time on December 5th, 2015. Wow. And That's um, four years ago. That, yes. Wow. And so, and here I was coming out to maximum security prison and engaging with people who have done things that I'd never even considered in my life before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what I saw was this richness in humanity, this sense of freedom and joy in them that just stunned me. And, uh, and so I was hooked. <laughs> and I started going to prison three times a week. And what were and you doing initially? Um, shadowing programs, participating okay. in different. So you're programs. like volunteering in other people's programs. Correct. Got it. And uh, and seeing how I was so unaware of what was happening behind those walls, and and what we didn't talk about is I have also very um, elaborate service life. I've been very much showing up in service, like to veterans when I was in, starting in high school, and mm -hmm. I worked with end of life AIDS patients in Kenya, and I spent years working in India, and also with a nonprofit that cares for street kids. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on of my involvement with veterans and homeless and wow. um, you know, poverty. And, uh, and, and so I was like, if I am so unaware of this space, most likely other people are unaware of it too. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, that's what led to um, the idea of organizing a TEDx event. I've always enjoyed um, TED Talks and I consider yeah. myself a TED junkie and <laughs> and um, and so that was uh, the inspiration and and you know again beautiful serendipitous moments happened to bring a team together to make that happen and when I went to the administration I uh, what was important to me is that this was going to be an event organized by the prison residents themselves um, this was not going to be something a group of outsiders come in and do because I truly believe that those that are most affected by a problem are the ones that best develop the solutions. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to put them at the center of, um, at that point it wasn't about a solution, at that point it was just about the experience. Yeah. And, and the event uh, that was held in May of 2017 and was so unbelievably wildly successful mm. on every account from the prison residents who organized it to those who attended it, to the yard, to the prison administration, to the people who attended from the outside, that that's what made me put my professional ambitions to the side and found brilliance inside to continue and expand this work of, um, of being able to enable people to connect, to uncover and ignite their brilliance. Mm -hmm. But then, um, because what I found is once people connect to that brilliance inside that exists in, I believe, every single one of us, mm -hmm. uh, they become unstoppable and create this ripple effect of healing around them. And so that's what we've observed and that's what brilliance inside is stands for and easier to do. So if I understand this correctly, once you conceived this idea, it was going, so the speakers would be prisoners. The volunteers who, who helped put it together would be prisoners. The organizers would be prisoners. Everybody involved, except maybe you and your staff who were. Yeah, the, the, or, the organizers are a core team of about 15 prison residents. Mm -hmm. They make all the decisions. So they select the speakers who are actually are a mix of inside and outside speakers. Oh, okay. And they select, um, you know, like the food and the experiences and the theme and the, which by the way, selected by a prison-wide vote. So it's an entire yeah. yard that votes on the theme. Mm. And, um, and they orchestrate the entire experience and then they actually run the entire experience. I always say that that day for me is a vacation day. I get to sit back and relax <laughs> and enjoy the show. And um, because... The, they in those five months they've worked so diligently in not just crafting themselves but crafting an, ex an experience that of dignity respect and love for everyone that's present that everyone that comes in gets to experience that with them mm. and and so it's a so we have a hundred people come in from the outside they go through security they um, get escorted onto the yard and then they spend the day with a hundred people from the inside and together they sit side by side and listen to the morning of TEDx talks, and then the afternoon of what we call TED Expression, which is a time of intimate conversation between all the attendees mixed all together that gets less and less structured as the day goes on. Wow, so you mean the people who come to view and the prison residents talk in the afternoon to each other? Um, yeah, well, not just the afternoon, the entire day yeah. is spent together, and so, so sharing. And, so, yeah, and so it's not just a formal program. Audience comes in, sits down, watches, and then leaves. There's no, because, because the, so the intent, you know, I, I hope this comes across.
cross okay with, you know, the TEDx is just an excuse. Right. Um, <clears throat> and um, because really what this is about is about creating a conversation between disconnected worlds. What this is about is about, you know, having um, that. So the guys inside prison, so I talk about men because Donovan's a men's prison, but the fact, right, let's, let's acknowledge the fact that there's incarcerated women as well. Sure. Um, and so um, the guys talk about the fact that it is a disconnection with humanity that led them to, you know, and facilitated the lashing out to humanity. Mm -hmm. And so they've also found that it's a reconnection to humanity that reduces and removes that, you know, that reaction that you know, falls back to violence. violence yeah. And so, so the space is one of, of humanity, of connection, of integration, mm -hmm. of understanding. And, um, and that happens, the text talks break the ice, but what really creates that human transformation in the residents, but also on the people on the outside. That's where the magic truly is, is in the experience that happens in the outside. In opening their minds, their hearts, their awareness, I'm sure, mm -hmm. of what this experience is like and who these men are. In this case, men in in Donovan State Prison, and for the residents, who the people on the outside are, they have mm -hmm. a pretty negative image of society. Again, mm -hmm. they they were, they're hurt by society and they disconnected from society, ah. and so it allows the healing of of their stories around, you know, who the vast majority of people on the outside are, mm -hmm. especially when there's people like cops that come in, and you know, mm -hmm. and they and they realize, but wait, cops that she's nice. Yeah, <laughs> and, which is literally a statement that was said about um, an ex-cop, a retired cop that came mm -hmm. in. Wow. So I love that statement. I want to just repeat it, what you said. It's the disconnection from humanity that creates this lashing out. And so the, the solution, so to speak, is the reconnection to humanity. Because now you're part of it. You're not going to lash out at it. Exactly. Oh, that's huge. All right, Mariette, in our next segment, we'll be talking some more about this amazing program and how it's transforming Donovan State Prison. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more Change It Up with Bola Show on AM 1170, The Answer. Now, more than ever, it's important for women to understand why they need a financial strategy. Women tend to make less money than men, live longer, and face more financial challenges during retirement. Hi, I'm Sherry Blair. With evolving roles and increasing responsibilities, women are seeking out ways to become more knowledgeable about their finances. My life's work has been to empower women to make good financial decisions today to help ensure you have a bright future tomorrow. I'm here to help you learn more and to become more. Give me a call for your free no-obligation consultation or a second opinion at 619-997-0416. 619-997-0416. That's 619-997-0416. Cherry Blair is registered with and securities are offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, is not an affiliated company. California license number 0B42369. My business has lost its upward momentum. I'm working up to 14 hours a day, but my sales seem to have plateaued. I'm so overwhelmed. I used to have that same problem, but ever since I found the Balanced Millionaire Consulting Firm, our sales and profits have risen sharply. Even our staff is more engaged, and the atmosphere is full of energy. I have no time to work on my business to develop new sales and marketing strategies. I would love to expand, have strategic partnerships, and access to financing. You can do all of that and more. The Balanced Millionaire Consulting Team advises you on streamlining your operations, establishing alliances, and most importantly, increasing your revenues and profits. Let us help you build value and reduce stress in your business. Take charge. Don't let your business control your life. Visit TheBalancedMillionaire.com or call 442-224-0160 for a free consultation. That's 442-224-0160 or TheBalancedMillionaire.com. Welcome back to Change It Up. Now here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio. I'm Paula Shaw, and I'm so happy to be in studio today with Mariette Formo. 
Many of you heard her in the last segment talking about her program, Brilliance Inside. Mariette is doing amazing work at Donovan State Prison, helping prisoners to create TEDx events. But along the way, there are many, many other things they are learning and experiencing. And we're going to be talking with Mariette about those things in this segment. So Mariette, first of all, in, in discussing the problem of recidivism and how difficult it is for men when they get out of prison earlier on, I gave some t statistics that weren't quite accurate. <laughs> so let's start with what does it cost the economy mm -hmm. to incarcerate people in our country? And this is just our country, right? That's correct. Yeah. So just to give a, uh, to start with the California specific statistic, it cost California taxpayers $75,000 a year to incarcerate one person. Wow. So $75,000 a year for one person. With that, we could be sending them to Brown or to, or to Berkeley yeah. undergrad, or business school, excuse me. And so can you imagine what where they'd be if they had the education I had instead of mm -hmm. being locked up in where they are? Or I shouldn't say instead, because I actually don't believe it should be instead. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, and now, uh, the number you said that you gave of one trillion is the total cost of incarceration to the U.S. economy. And so it's that cost, but it also includes the cost of lost wages, the impact of families, the, the children who raise, who grew up without, without parents, mm -hmm. and, and um, the, the direct and indirect cost for our society uh, is, has been calculated to be a, a trillion dollars, which is 6% of our country's GDP. Wow. So that's a very significant mm -hmm. impact. And so it's something that, if you're like me, has been invisible to you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet, uh, it's actually something that impacts me on a daily basis. I just mm -hmm. never realized it did. That's so, huge. I and think it, most people probably don't have any idea it costs that kind of money. Oh, and I just have no idea that there are, you know, the 2.5 million people that are locked up behind bars. And again, I will say that many of them deserve a timeout for some, from society. So it's not about not having them be locked up necessarily, mm -hmm. but it is about what do we do, you know, and how do we support them? Because the other statistic is that 95% of the people that are incarcerated are going to come out one day. And wow. so what kind of person do you want coming out? Mm -hmm. You want one that's learned the rules of criminality and is bitter and angry and you know, comes out with a ton of resentment? Or do you want someone that's done a very difficult and vulnerable journey to understand what they call the causative factors mm -hmm. of their actions, to be able to heal the wounds that created them, put them on the journey of violence and, and darkness and destruction so that they can become the people that are the neighbors we want to mm -hmm. have next to us. And my choice is clear in that, in, in when I put it in that equation, mm -hmm. and that I want people to be able to, to, um, to heal so that they can become the neighbors and, and, and the cashiers and the people down the streets that I wish to be surrounded by. You know, I think a lot of people out there, Marriott, don't believe that this kind of a person can ever be that preferred neighbor next door. I think they, they have an idea that this person is bad to the bone or something, you know what I mean? Somehow defective, and that's how they ended up in prison in the first place. But I think you have a, had a very different experience of that. Can you share some of your experiences with these prison residents that have transformed your belief about what can actually happen and the kind of healing that can actually take place? I have so many stories, um, and I'll tell you, I did not go in as a, as a, I, I went in with the same beliefs most people that you just expressed most people have, mm -hmm. and, um, and so, and I just, it's been experience upon experience, so one of those first ones um, that uh, was actually when we went to visit uh, and experience a, the, the very first TEDx that ever was held inside a prison in Ohio. And they were in their sixth year of holding annual TEDx's. So this is done in other prisons. Yes. Mm -hmm. And though we are the only reoccurring prison TEDx to, as right now that I know, as I, far see. As I know, unless something's changed recently. And, um, and so we went to go experience their events. And, um, and all of it was run by 
you know, again, same thing by prison residents, but or orchestrated mainly by two guys. And just these powerful leaders that were funny and generous with their spirit, how they showed up. And I was just in awe of, you know, just the, the leadership skills I was seeing in them and, and, and just how they, 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 you know, just were able to, to galvanize everyone around them to create this event. Mm -hmm. And at one point, um, I sit down with one of them to talk through some of the details and logistics. And in that conversation, with the same openness and transparency with which he seemed to approach everything in his life, he tells me what he's locked up for. Aggravated rape. Oh, my. My walls went up instantly. Mm -hmm. Because there's few things, I believe, are more soul-destroying than sexual assault. Mm -hmm. I actually don't believe there's anything more soul-destroying than sexual assault. And, um, and I felt my entire being shut down. Wow. And as my walls th th like were thrown up, I asked myself the vulnerable question, can I still see this person across from me as a human, the same human being, as a generous, funny leader I was just seeing him as? Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I chose to say yes. Mm. And I felt my walls come down. And as they did, I felt myself realize that he can hold, be that duality. He can be the man that had done this atrocious act and likely really damaged a person's being mm -hmm. and likely the other people around them. And today, be the generous, funny leader that I saw. And once I was able to hold that duality, it changed my perspective on so many things. And now I have seen countless, countless people, by the way, myself included, move through the trauma and the hurt and the disenfranchisement that you know they or we have experienced and uh and to be able to connect to that deeper truth about ourselves which mm -hmm. i call our brilliance mm -hmm. and i have found that when we release the hurt when we heal those wounds that allows that our inner brilliance that has always been there to shine it's just for some of us has been so damaged and so hidden and so obscured by negativity and destruction. Mm -hmm. And as we release that, it comes up. And like I said earlier, at a point, people become unstoppable in change. And so one quick example of a story of someone, he had, um, at 17 years old, he was convicted with a sentence of life without the possibility of oh, parole. my God. At 17 years 17. old, he was told that he was going to spend the rest of his life in prison. He was going to die in prison. There's nothing he can do about it because he was irredeemable. Mm. And with some changes in the laws as well as a, a huge amount of change in him, because he, even though it was going to have no impact on his incarceration or his possible release, he made the choice of stepping away from destruction. And, um, and because of that, last year, this man walked out of prison. <gasps> Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> and wow. he not only is now out and employed and powerfully employed, but he, on top of that, is unstoppable in bringing what he learned to others. And so he's already, usually they require a long lead time for people to go back to prison. Mm -hmm. He's already been allowed back to prison within, I think it was three months of being released because of the message that he carries. You mean to go back voluntarily? Yeah, to as, as help a speaker oh. and a motivational person wow. and inspiration for oh, these guys. My gosh. He is also in the process of being approved by the LA school district to be able to be a motivational speaker oh. and a mentor to, this, to the kids of the LA school district. So here's a guy who at 17 we considered a society to be irredeemable. And today's not only redeemed, but he's absolutely got my word unstoppable in sharing what he learned mm -hmm. with the kids around him with anyone who's willing to listen and he's actually coming down to San Diego he's like Mike, I want to go back to Donovan and be able to share what I learned with, with the guys there also mm -hmm. and that's just one of countless stories and even for those that are still inside they impact their 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 community on the inside and they even find ways of impacting the community on the outside mm -hmm. because they're so committed to bringing what they learned to at risk youth and that part is so huge. And, and by the way, I, I have to share with you, when I was there at the Restorative Justice Fair, one of the, um, one of the activities that we partook in was ha some of the guys had written forgiveness letters, uh, asking forgiveness. Yeah, and 
and they asked some of us, would we stand in for the victim? And the man who was reading his letter to me had raped and murdered a woman. And I had a similar experience to what you said. In the moment, I could just feel this. And yet I knew energetically if I shut down, it was going to impact his experience. So I just said a little prayer and asked to be able to keep my heart open and, and keep a safe space for him to do this work he needed to do. And one of the most gratifying moments of my day was later on he came up to me in the yard and he thanked me and asked to shake my hand and said, I could just feel that you weren't judging me and that you, you gave me a safe space to say what I had to say. And I realized too in that moment, whoa, these are human beings, you know? These are human beings with hearts and souls and minds, just like all the rest of us who made some bad choices at one point in time. And so many of them had circumstances in growing up that were heinous, horrible situations that created them to be the, the beings that did those things. And that's why one of the things I so love about your work is that you're seeing beyond what they did and you're seeing those human beings. So I'm just so glad you're here. And after this break, we'll talk some more about your amazing program, Brilliance on the Brilliance Inside, how you're funded, and what maybe our listeners can do to help. All right, we'll be right back. We'll be right back with more Change It Up with Bola Show on AM 1170, The Answer. Jack Gutman survived World War II and then returned home to the hardest fight of his life with PTSD and alcoholism. Now at age 93, he's a businessman and comedian, sharing his message of recovery and hope in his new book, One Veteran's Journey to Heal the Wounds of War, helping our heroes and anyone who has experienced PTSD find happiness again. Get Jack Gutman's new book, One Veteran's Journey to Heal the Wounds of War, at Amazon.com or to order a signed copy, call 714-525-4954. For those looking to improve their lives, there's nobody better to turn to than Paula Shaw. Paula helps people regain successful lives by identifying and eliminating self-sabotaging behavior using a multitude of mind-body techniques to identify and resolve their core issues. Working with a wide variety of healing modalities, she provides her clients with the most effective process for their specific needs. To book a session with Paula, call 858-480-9234. That's 858-480-9234. Welcome back to Change It Up. Now here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. And we are being brought to you by LifeWave, leaders in the field of activating stem cells and creating phototherapy patches to impact your life and your health in positive ways. I am in studio with Mariette Formeau, creator of Brilliance Inside, which is a program, an amazing program she is carrying out at Donovan State Prison. One of the biggest focuses of the program is creating TEDx events, and yet there's stuff that's going on all year long. And Mariette, let's talk a little bit about, separate from even just what must be incredibly huge when there's a TEDx event coming up and all the things that need to be done. But when you go, and you go four days a week, is that correct? Yeah, we have programs running four days a week. Four days a week. So tell us about those programs and what's happening with the guys in those programs. Um, so we have, so, so um, TEDx, TEDx is not the reason for existing. Um, TEDx is, is the a vehicle, the most visible piece of the equation. Mm -hmm. The real, the Brilliant Society's mission is to heal our society's cycle of violence. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what we stand for. Let's that's say that one more time. Brilliance Inside is to heal our society's cycle of violence. Correct. I love that. Okay, tell us more about that. And and so really, um, you know, what, what just popped into my mind is a beautiful poem by Lao Tzu um, mm -hmm. from what, I don't remember, Year four hundred, or is it? That's, I think that's about the timing of when mm -hmm. when he. Um, anyways, it's the idea: if you, if you want peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. If you want peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. 
And it goes on like that if there must be, you know, peace in the cities, there must be peace in the neighborhoods, which means peace in the home, which ultimately means peace in the hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, and that really is, you know, represents the ideas that, that we come from. It's the idea that if we want to heal our society's cycle of violence, it starts by healing our own hearts. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by allowing that brilliance, again, is truly in all of us to, to show up. And, and a lot of these gentlemen have never even perceived their own brilliance. Mm -hmm. And so at the beginning, it's about holding space for the brilliance we see in them that they can't even see in themselves. Right. And this isn't just being smart, because I think a lot of people equate brilliance with just being smart. But you're no, talking no, no. about brilliance. That's, this is our brilliance, our, that unique divine spark in all of us, okay. that God-given gift that we each carry mm -hmm. and that is ultimately our purpose in this world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's our brilliance because when we connect to that, we become a light and we enable light the, to light others. And, um, and so that's, that's really the, the purpose of all the programs is, is to provide those, those character-building skills um, and that are things like you know emotional intelligence and nonviolent communication and conflict resolution and pro-social behaviors and boundaries, which is hugely important in that mm -hmm. space, and and you know and all the aspects that help us become um, full, complete, whole, resilient human beings. Mm -hmm. Because the fact of the matter is, once our roots are are like our anchor. Once we, once we are able to grow our roots, when the storm comes, because we all know it's not a question of if the storm comes, it's a question of when the storm comes. Mm -hmm. We may sway in the wind, we may even lose a branch, but if our roots are deep, we will no longer get uprooted. Mm. And that, yeah. to me, is what like, you know, our journey is meant to be, is to be able to grow our roots so deep that when the storm comes, we, like, we are still able to be the strong oak tree, the strong red redwood, that you know will will not be faced by it, and so that's the purpose of our programs is to is to teach those those lessons, and 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 we do so experientially, meaning we don't go in saying okay today let's learn about right. you know this is this you know like in NVC there's a concept of needs and strategies which I absolutely love, um, but in in our ongoing friends program we don't go in and and teach that academic part we have another nonviolent communication program in which we teach that academically. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we do so more by doing it experientially, meaning it's just in context. Uh, and so, for example, at the beginning, um, the guys will get together and banter with each other. And what we found is often, like, criti critical banter is a sign of our own hurt. Mm -hmm. And so we create a place in, at the time of being a mirror and be like, okay, wait, what's going on right now in you? Like, time out. Like, what's going on in you? Why are you... Act, like um, speaking in this way, mm -hmm. and little by little, creating that self-reflection so that they can see the, the where it's coming from and be able to heal that. And little by little, mm -hmm. that 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 behavior of, of bantering, of poking, of of blaming, of criticizing just disappears. Wow. And and you know we've been mesmerized times. We we've literally walked off the yard being like, wow, if our boardrooms could be the like the similar to the experience we've just had, mm -hmm. because when we organize a TEDx event. Um, by definition, when we have 20 usual leaders in the room, um, you know, there's going to be times when people have very different opinions. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so we've had times, and I remember one in particular, where we were talking about a very sensitive subject and making a decision on a very sensitive subject. And people had their, their opinions that were different, and they believed their opinion was the right one, no matter what anyone else said. <laughs> And what was amazing to me is that that conversation took place. Like, tension was palpable. Cut it, you could cut it with a knife. And voices even rose into the point of some of the guys yelling. But never, ever was there any criticism, any blaming, any condemnation. It was always about uplifting the other's perspective and theirs as well. Wow. And it's... You know, it's so amazing when we have the perspectives of who, what we have, the people that are locked up, to see that because we're like, wow, like they're healthier in their conversation and communication than I am. Mm. And so those are the the tools that we um, that we're there to 
to, 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 um, to teach. And so our space is a space of forgiveness, and yet we never actually speak about forgiveness. We never use that word. And yet everything that we do is permeated with forgiveness. Wow. And by working on creating that resilience, well, we're able to you know, become the brilliant beings that we are. Mm -hmm. And when you have a collection of beings that are connected to their brilliance, that and they are able to honor the brilliance within them and then honor the brilliance of everyone else on the yes. team. Mm -hmm. And then what it creates is this, you know, you know, this amazing, powerful, high performance team, which is why we've been able to create the results that we've created um, with our TEDx event. Let me just say one of those because um, like TED measures the net promoter score of every TEDx event worldwide. And there's been ten thousand of them mm -hmm. to date. Wow. And that promoter score is essentially a measure of a customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And it's measured from negative 100 to 100. And, um, and a company is usually delighted with a net promoter score of 30. Mm -hmm. Very few brands in the world, we're talking the Apples and Googles of the world, reach an MPS of 70. In our event, that was organized by a group of no good societal throwaways, people we consider to be inhumane, even monsters, that are out to kill each other on the yard because we're different races and you know crossing that boundary of race on the yard can get the risk getting you seriously hurt and killed. That same group organized an event that got a net promoter score of an unprecedented perfect 100. What? Oh my God. That kind of result is what's possible wow. when we focus mm -hmm. on connecting to that brilliance. And so oh. that's why that's what all of our programs Amazing. are all about. Amazing. And the TEDx is just the visible part of the iceberg. Mm. And that's the case for all of us in all of our lives, is that we might have the pieces that are visible of our life. But really, if you want to change that, it is by changing what's happening underneath. And what I guarantee you is you do the work to heal those wounds and to allow your brilliance to show up. It will show up. It will start oozing out of you without you even trying. Mm. And, and that's how I see us healing and changing the world. Oh, Marianne, that was so beautifully said. And, and I just want to be sure that before we run out of time, we give people information. If they want to donate to help this program or reach you, how would they do that? So the easiest place to reach us is on the Brilliance Inside website, which is just okay. simply at brilliantsinside.org. Mm -hmm. In and the contact, go to the contact tab. Correct. Okay. And, uh, and so you'll see a bunch of stories. And and yes, of course, you know, like any nonprofit, um, you know, we we survive on the on the support and the love of others. And and um, because the fact of the matter is, on top of that, I love going back to the guys and talking about the support and the donations we've received, because here are a bunch of guys mm. who have who often see themselves as being you know completely thrown out by society, and when they hear the stories attached to the donations. And, and you know, especially when that's tied to how it was, how people were moved, mm -hmm. um, it really provides them with opportunity to feel seen and heard, and that they actually are part of our society, oh, even yes. behind those bars. So people can donate on the website as well. Absolutely. Oh, fabulous! All right, Marriott, I thank you so much. We're out of time right now, but you've got to come back one day because this has been an amazing conversation. Well, thank you, Father. I appreciate it. Oh. Thank you, and thank you to all my listeners for being here and to the Facebook live stream audience. You can hear us on Sunday nights on AM 1170 and 96.1 FM, and we're on every major platform of podcasting, and you can also find us on iHeartRadio. So please share our show, share with your friends, tell them all about Marriott's work, and we look forward to seeing you next week on Change It Up Radio. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Change It Up with Life Transitions expert, speaker, and best-selling author, Paula Shaw. Join the Change It Up movement with Paula Shaw as we explore topics that inspire, welcome change, and create a new kind of conversation. To learn more about Paula, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities, visit changeitupradio.com. Whether you're feeling happy, sad, mad, or glad, it never hurts to change it up. Todd, can I say goodbye to the, the live stream audience? Yes, okay. <laughs> we can. 
Thank you, live stream viewers, for being with us. I told you this was gonna be an amazing show. This is an amazing lady. Marianne, would you like to say any last things to them? Well, I, I am always, always grateful. So I'm grateful because what, I, what I've seen is that people that tune into um, to podcasts and live streams like yours are people who are on that journey and who wish it for themselves, but ultimately all of us, we wish it for ourselves because we wish it for others. Right. And, and so I thank you for the journey you've already done. I thank you for your commitment to your own journey because that is how we change the world. Absolutely, and thank you for your commitment to your journey. Thank you, I appreciate mm. it. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you again next week. We will be uh, at our usual time, but thanks for being with us. We'll always let you know. Take care, bye-bye.